Well, I, I did two things this week. I've been, I did the, uh, the histrionics quiz show, which I wrote on Friday, and we had Dan Snow and Ian Hislop and Neil Oliver and Natalie Haynes and, and Charlie Higson in the chair, which is amazing to have. Um, in it, when you put together a BBC quiz show, you couldn't ask for a better panel. And we had them just to do, uh, to do a show here at Chalk Valley. And, and they were great, and I, I, I'm hopeful there might be a series to come out of it. Actually, it was absolutely beautiful. And then I had I had, I had Saturday off, which was great, so I could just come here with the family. And we did sword fights, and and we had a go at archery, and we went down the helter skelter, and we watched people firing guns, and they had a wonderful time. And then I gave my interesting bits talk tonight on just the sort of bits of history that none of the proper historians would have dealt with because they're, they're frankly silly. Um, <laughs> and it was lovely. And I do a lot of festivals uh, and talks and, and whatnot. And it was such a lovely audience. They were enthusiastic. They were big. Big audience is always good. But they were enthusiastic and asked interesting questions and it was positive. It felt like they wanted you to be there and wanted you to talk to them. Um, uh, I haven't been to a better one in years, frankly. The, I think the, the surprise about the festival is that it's been going three years. You'd think it'd have been going 30, because it's, um, well, it's run entirely on a voluntary basis. Everyone, you arrive you know, as an author and you've never been here before, and you walk into this big tent and you think, oh, where am I going to go? What do I do? And uh, there's always someone who picks you up and says, oh, right, you're such and such, and you come with us, and you're completely looked after, which, which is, is important because you have arrived in the middle of nowhere and you don't know what's going to happen, and you don't know if you're going to be talking to 10 people or 50 people or 100 or 1,000 or 5,000, who knows? Um, and so it's really friendly, but actually very organised, and there are much bigger, posher festivals that are less well-organised than this one. It's partly because it is all local people who are largely putting in their time for nothing. Um, they're genuinely friendly. They genuinely want you to be all right and sort it out. And, and it makes a great difference. It, it's, a, it's a very family sort of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. a family festival. And you turn up, and I turn up, I have to turn up, obviously, with the family. So I'm not going to come on my own. And they looked after as well. And it was really lovely to... Uh, just immediately feel a part of it. How do you go about writing a panel show? Because it's a very... Well, uh, writing a panel show is an odd thing because, of course, a, a panel show clearly isn't written. You get a bunch of people in a room and they sit down uh, and they, they, they talk about stuff. But, of course, actually, uh, and all television is constructed, there's no such thing as a freeform television show. And when you say you write it, what you mean is, obviously, you don't write what people say. Uh, that's entirely up to them. What you do is try and provide a structure that gives them things to talk about and places to go. So you write bits for the host to help them introduce things. And then you look at who's going to be on a panel and you try and find questions and subjects and areas that they know about and that they like and that perhaps one of them knows a lot about but the others don't know anything about. And you come up with questions and themes and rounds. The idea being that you just give them enough options that everyone has a chance to say something, everyone has yeah. a chance to be involved in it. Um, you can't write it. They, they say what they say because these, you know, I, when we did histrionics, they're standing up in front of 750 people live. Yeah. Uh, they just have to... The extraordinary thing is, they do it themselves. All you can do is provide them with information and ideas and thoughts and mental pictures and sometimes physical pictures on a screen that they can then work with. And the job is just is to give them ammunition. Right. And if I give them the right ammunition, then... They, they do the work, they do the job, they make a great show. They were fantastic. A pilot, the first time you ever do anything, is invariably a train wreck. <laughs> it's a very good reason why when you do a pilot, you almost never see it screened on TV. It's invariably hidden away because you don't know how it's going to work and you don't know if you've got the right people and you don't know if you've particularly got the right questions or the right themes. 
Uh, and this was a, a bold way of doing it. So we stood up in front of 700 people and said, right, well, we'll just do it. Uh, and they were fantastic. And I hope I gave them enough scope. But all I do is give them scope. They do the work. They, they stand up there on the stage in front of everyone and talk. And they were great. If, if I had a complaint, Dan Snow's too clever. Um, <laughs> he did seem to know everything. He does know... I, I knew he was smart, and I thought I'll catch him out. And I was annoyed that there were several occasions where I thought I'd definitely catch him out where I didn't. The point of the panel shows is, you know, we score points on them, and they were winners and losers, but actually none of that really matters. These fundamentally, they're parlour games. They're the games we play at Christmas with people we love, yeah. and we do it for the joy of doing it. And so when someone does know a lot, what you hope is that they will then throw the conversation out to everyone else so we all talk about it which is exactly what Dan does so then it becomes actually it's like being at a brilliant dinner party yeah. uh, when, you, when a panel show goes well you're sitting in a pub having dinner with Dan Snow and Charlie Higson and Ian Hislop and Natalie Haynes and Neil Oliver and that's great uh, and that's all it should be the, nobody really cares who wins the point is the quality of the conversation really the extraordinary thing about this festival is the it, it's a good sized festival now but you know it, it's not enormous like hey or uh, at this weekend of course Glastonbury is going on but the quality of the uh, quality is such a rude word isn't it but but you get top caliber historians I had everyone who I would want on any panel show I wrote um, is here I mean the whole lot have been here we've had uh, well, obviously we've had Dan Snow and Charlie Higson and Max Hastings is here tonight and we have Tom Stoppard I mean, the lovely thing is to get these enormous names in actually quite an intimate environment where not only in the green room but actually walking around the site um, you get to meet these really you know really very serious people people who really know their stuff who have by hook or crook been persuaded to come down here <laughs> And do do this festival. You couldn't ask for a better lineup. I would think certainly after this year, anyone who does anything in popular history is going to be peaked if they're not invited. I've had a brilliant time. It's been the best I've done.